Um, that said, uh, I guess we'll kind of go into the part two of, uh, of the stream here and talk a little bit more about the other activities um, that Jared and, and Ken are doing. Um, still, of course, within the Zyborg um, uh, network, I guess you could say. Um, everything from the Blade Library, which I think some of you might have heard about, um, to Shibuya City Games, um, and all the way into uh, Race Tokyo, which is a documentary and the, the affordable Blade project that that's a part of. So, Ken, do you want to uh, kick off the the Blade yeah, Library? This is the photo of the Blade Library, and we have a bunch of the Blade from the uh, not not only from our company, but also the other company as well. We have various type of the blade for any who just me to the laboratory, and also we have a truck just beside the lab space that that empty can just come in and place the blade and run on the truck and put it back to the library. So I guess this is the uh, the world's easiest place to run on the blade. We made it because the blade is very expensive, and also it's hard to run on the blade. So we have, fortunately, we had a place and also we have a, a library and we have some budget to play thanks to the cloud. Uh, so we put all together into the lab space and we made it the Blade Library for people. So Cyborg is making a Blade for top athlete. And on the other hand, Blade Library is the place for any empty to enjoy running and we the every month we organize a clinic for empty the we embody the prosthetist and also some athlete and they often teach how to replace the blade on the how to run on the track and jared also once came into japan and joined, joined our clinic and he he also had a very good lecture to them that time. And are these kind of um, blade libraries, can you find these anywhere in Japan or in other places in the world? Or is a blade library kind of a special project? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I have never seen this kind of place. And Jared, you said you were able to, um, I'm sure you, you come here often, but how was your impression and, and why do you kind of think this, um, this type of uh, facility is important? Yeah, totally. I mean, goodness gracious, it's, it definitely is the only, only one in the world, uh, at, at least in this capacity, you know, attached to a track, you can literally come rent a blade for $7 an hour, put it on and, and go have fun. So um, it changes the game. Uh, when you think about uh, how expensive the prosthetics uh, are, the how expensive the blades are, how expensive sockets are to get made. Um, you know, that's the, the number one reason that people do not have running blades and are not active is not because people don't want to run and it's not because mm -hmm. they don't want to be fully human. It's because they can't afford, um, to be fully human, uh, literally. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, having this, um, space is, is absolutely pivotal, um, and, and really a game changer. And, uh, you know, our, our goal and my goal is to, to continue to develop, uh, you know, these blade libraries and have them in, in multiple cities all over the world, because I think that it really will continue to open the doors of opportunity for people to, uh, to be fully, fully human and fully themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think when I went to Japan for the first time um, and, and experienced the blade library for the first time working with Ken and the team. You know, I, I, I came on board to, to work with Cyborg and to work with Ken to help design the fastest blades in the world and uh, to, to hopefully use the fastest blade in the world um, and quickly realized that um, Ken and I are similarly cut from, from the same cloth in the sense that we, uh, we don't want to s um, only use our passions, skills, giftedness for, um, to greater ourselves, but to greater others. And, um, and he took this, uh, you know, idea of, of giving people opportunities that, that, you know, probably started with that conversation that he had with the athlete that said, you know, kids don't have access and kids, you know, there's not plates for kids. He said, okay, well, let me create a space that's going to be able to, uh, you know, let that happen. Um, you know, he, he created a big, big playground for people with, that, that, that can run with prosthetics. So, um, you know, very quickly I realized that, um, yeah, Ken and I are going to, 
definitely work together to make um, really great blades, but um, we're, we're going to do more than that. I don't know what that, that is yet, um, but this blade library is a really great foundation to, um, to, to work from. So yeah, it was an amazing experience for me being there for the first time and getting to literally watch someone run on a blade mm. for their very first time. And, you know, that flashed me back to my first time running on a blade. You know, every amputee who's run on a prosthetic blade has that first time, remembers opening that first box, remembers putting on that first blade and taking that first step and then, you know, having the courage enough to, to begin jogging. You know, go back to, you know, the fear of uh, trusting the blade. Imagine the fear of the very first time without a relationship mm. with an engineer, really knowing if you can trust the product at all. And, and uh, the fun part is, is, you know, you put it on a, a six-year-old kid and, and there's no fear at all. They just go down <laughs> and you're just like, whoa, this is amazing. Like, this is what it's about. And, uh, and so that my eyes just got open to that uh, there, getting to, you know, do a little running clinic and, and help not only the kids learn how to run, but even work exclusively with the process there on helping mm -hmm. to educate them on the importance of the alignment. You know, going back to what I was saying earlier, you can take one blade and put it on seven different people and align it in a bunch of different ways. And it's either going to be good or bad for them. It's not necessarily that the blade's bad, but you've got to put it on the on the socket in a way that's going to allow the user mm -hmm. to use it effectively. And so being able to work with the process in that, um, you know, in that environment was really helpful, um, both for the kids success and then also for the process mm -hmm. to, to gain some education on um, the proper alignment and usage of the blade. I, I want to go uh, a little bit back into that in a second. Um, but uh, going back to Ken, uh, as an engineer, I'm sure, uh, you know, you, you find a problem, you design the solution, and in the sense of a, uh, a blade, you can make it and it's very tangible and easy. Easy compared to having this vision for creating a blade library, which is a giant facility, which needs teams to run it, which needs government support, uh, and also a community to support it. Um, how, what was it like uh, creating this blade library and how has the community responded um, to having it um, in their city? Honestly, I'm very bad at making the community. And we don't have any support from anywhere at that time because it's a very hard situation. A lot of people are, are very interested in the Olympic and Paralympic game, but we are not. Mm. So they are not interested in paying the money to some company which is not sponsored because they want to do something the Olympic and Paralympic games. Mm. So we up communicating with them and we started the crowdfunding by our own, not using the uh, some uh, story of the Olympic Paralympic game. We just want all empty to run, enjoy running on the day. That's the story. And the but we have we raised a much money and we purchased the more than twenty blades here and we we didn't get we couldn't get the support from the government. We couldn't get the uh, hmm. support from the uh, official Olympic Paralympic organization, but we have very good support from the people. And eventually, we the Olympic Channel featured us. I like that story. Yeah, they, everyone always wants to be there when the bread's done, right? <laughs> Is um, with the about. I mean, the going back to what uh, Jared was saying, and this is still a question for you, Ken. Um, and maybe this is a bit more culturally, culturally specific to Japan. Uh, what is the situation like in regards to support for um, amputees or uh, children? And what is kind of the cultural um, expectation for those people? Sorry, that was maybe a loaded question. Uh, so, um, in Japan, is it um, common to see uh, people using prosthetics? Is it something that um, isn't surprising? Uh, and when you ask, when people ask you about the Blade Library, are they surprised this thing exists? Is this the first time they've heard about it? Or are they like, oh, I know someone that would love to do this and they introduce you? I think the Blade Library is very popular and famous for the people who are interested in the Paralympic game. Mm. But I, I, I don't think that almost all people don't know about it. 
I mean, it just feels like the the tagline, you know, um, seeing a child run for the first time, that it would be, you know, everyone would be there. Um, what do you think are the kind of challenges? Um, why, why do you think that's not happening? Why do, why do you think that um, people aren't? Why isn't it full every day, I guess, is the simple way to ask. I, I don't even know that. I guess it's very too expensive for them. And they mm. just... Uh, they just don't know how how to get the opportunity to run on the blade. Mm. Yeah, many mm. people just give up running on the blade. Well, not for long. When when Jared brings home the gold again, I think we'll see a spike. So I hope so, man. You know, I I want to add on to that real quick too, because I think that um, there's just kind of like a double-edged sword with it almost. Like, so we need to use the Paralympics and the platform of Paralympic and highly competitive sport to like drive like drive awareness and and hopefully create like um a desire for for people to compete um uh, or or just be active but there's mm. this it's almost like you know separation and saying like if someone sees you know, a parallel sprinter, like why I could never use that. Cause I, you know, I'm not, I can't run that fast or I can't do that. You know, so there's, there's almost, right. um, there's no like normalcy um, in it. Like you mm. rarely see someone just on the street jogging with a running blade. It's, it's so uncommon that there's maybe this gap of separation and thinking that, Oh, well I can't have one of those unless I'm an elite athlete and I'm not an elite athlete. So I shouldn't have one. And unfortunately, because of the cost, it's it that has become, I think, the um, the unintentional rhetoric around the the, the product, and and um, it, it's it, you know we've kind of as an industry created that that giant without even realizing the impact of it, you know. Um, and so, I, I really think that yes, I truly believe that the cost is the number one driver of why people don't have them. Um, but unless it's just like you're this just like crazy driven, motivated person that's like not going to let anything stop you, you're not going to work extremely hard to try to go and get something that that has never been presented as normal. Um, mm. And and so you know my hope, yeah, I, you know I'm standing on on a, you know on a, on a platform and uh, you know using trying to use sport to to help uh, you know bring more awareness around. Um, you know, these products and these designs, but, um, you know, I'm really trying to lean in to find a way, how can we, how can we create normalcy in this? How can we make it become, um, you know, more cost effective? Yes, but, but more common for people to just say, Hey, well, of course I'm human. I want to be able to run. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to active, be active. This is, this is a normal part of my life. It's not, you sure. know, not everyone experiences that, but you know, if, if someone who has two legs wants to go run, they go to the store, they buy a pair of running shoes. Sometimes they sure. go to a store that has a testing place where they can get on a treadmill and mm. test different shoes. Well, that's the vision behind the Blade Library. If you have a place in, in, in you know, your area that you can go and test a product and say, okay, cool, I like this one. I would like to get this so that I can be normal too or that so that I can just experience the joy of exercise, mm. there, should be, um, there should be that opportunity um, and, and, and cost and, and, and access to the, the two things that are deteriorating that right now.